Welcome back, Turning Hard Times and Good Times. I'm your host, Jay Taylor. Really pleased to have Dr. Quentin Hanning with me once again. Today he's here to give us an update on El Oro Resources. It's a company that he is an advisor to, and it is also a company, I believe, that the firm he works for uh, and is a principal of um, also owns El Oro. It uh, trades uh, ELO in Canada, ELRRF in the U.S., 69.9 million shares, uh, $2.95 in U.S. money, thereabouts, $206 million market cap. Uh, it is a story that is emerging into a world-class uh, deposit and a very, very exciting story. Thanks for joining me, Quentin. Hey, Jay. Always a pleasure. Really good to have you again. Uh, last time we talked to you about El Oro was May 10th, and since then there have been some spectacular intercepts reported by the company. I mean, some of the headline numbers I have in front of me, uh, May 25th, uh, 251 meters, grading 160 grams uh, uh, silver equivalent, uh, June 14th, 88.66 meters, grading 146 uh, grams of gold, uh, silver equivalent. Uh, and then July 21st, really the biggest of them all so far, I think, uh, 349 meters, grading 188.6 uh, grams per ton silver equivalent. And those, when I looked at those numbers and sort of can put them into terms of gold, and then looked at gram meters. They seem pretty spectacular to me, uh, Quentin. Uh, yeah. Is that is that the way you see it? Uh, very much so. Yeah, I I do the same thing, Chase. I'm chuckling because I do almost the exact same thing as what you're describing. Um, yeah, look at at 188 gram silver equivalent per ton. You know, <laughs> that, it, depending on what you use. I mean, right now the silver gold ratio has spiked up because of uh, whatever. I yeah. mean. It hasn't had. I mean, you know, now everything's kind of fallen. But uh, you know, it's if you use eighty, let's say, okay, you get about a little over two grams, two point two five grams or something like that per uh-huh. ton. Three hundred and fifty meters. I mean, that's that's just mind boggling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, it, it really is. Uh, but but you know, this this is not just an occasional hit. Uh, an awful lot of drilling has taken place into this uh, primary well, an area that they're really looking, I guess, to put together uh, their, their maiden resource in the not-too-distant future, I'm hoping. Uh, can, can you give us an idea, and, I, and you've done a wonderful job, if people go to Crestcat Gets Active, your last video this last Friday, um, really sort of, you know, you did a, like a three-dimensional um, picture that really helps people get a sense of how this thing hangs together. Uh, could you just talk a little bit about the dimensions of what we know so far based on the drilling that's taken place today. Sure. Yes. Uh, first of all, I'll talk about these types of systems. They are what we call polymetallic systems, and they, that means they have a lot of different metals in, in them. In this case, they have silver, uh, zinc, lead, tin. There's even a bit of gold. There's even a bit of copper. And uh, the scale of this thing uh, is is impressive. There's a lot of systems in Bolivia that are quite large. There, you know, Bolivia's uh, well endowed with this particular type of, of deposit. Uh, but this one in particular seems to be extraordinarily big. Uh, right now, from north to south, I think the total length uh, of mineralization is around 2.2 kilometers. Uh, from surface down to the deepest drilling that, that's been done on the property, you know we see it intercepts down a kilometer and it's open at depth, and then uh, the width is approaching a kilometer as well. So you know, and and it's open, it's still open. There's not nothing has closed this thing off. You know what uh, what I think is important for people to understand though is, you know, th- this thing will there, there's definitely a lot of mineralization here. Will underpin a large resource, but what's really exciting here, uh, just recently, like with this news release, is they've identified a particularly uh, you know a notable higher grade zone around the Santa Barbara area and in the southern Santa Barbara area, where that that drill intercept that you mentioned a minute ago came from. It's 349 meters of 188 gram per ton silver equivalent. And, and that's really starting – it was an underground hole, okay, so it's collared in a small added, an uh, underground working that's about 100 meters below surface. But it, it was mineralized from the start of the hole, you know, down nearly 350 meters continuously. That's extraordinary. I mean, you know, anybody that has uh, a, any level of doubt around this system and its capacity to generate a remarkable mine, uh, that, that hole pretty much – 
kills that. Okay, you, you've got a, a killer uh, deposit here. Uh, I show them the three D model that mm -hmm. put on Friday. You know what a pit might look like. You can kind of you know look at the video and you can imagine just drawing a pit, drawing a cone shaped pit around any of that, and you'll see that uh, the mineralization drilled to date should form an exquisite open pit deposit. I would say there's there's virtually no stripping off surface. I mean, there's going to be a bit of oxide at the top that you have to take off, meaning, you know, there's no mineralization in it because it's oxidized away. Uh, but it's pretty thin, you know, so you, you strip that off. But then once you get down into the deposit, I mean, you know, probably the volume of mineralization within the Santa Barbara area is like 70 or 80%. So your internal waste is really, you're only stripping. And, you know, that's minimal. So um, <clears throat> what's not to like? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. of course, of course, we're looking forward to a, a maiden resource, uh, uh, and the company keeps expanding the the size of the middle of the uh, of the resource. So I don't know, do they have a firm date for coming up with a resource, or is that still open? Depending on it, it's it's still open, and you know, I I actually am one of the advocates that kind of push to keep it open because mm -hmm. I think uh, you know, like, why would you stop drilling and, and announce a resource when you, you're halfway through and you're still hitting holes like this? <laughs> uh, it doesn't make any sense. So, yeah. um, you know, I, I guess I would advocate the company should it, certainly at least drill off or, you know, close off this higher grade Santa Barbara area before they announce a resource, but maybe even, you know, uh, well, I will see. I mean, they, there's plenty of runway down to the south there where they they continue drilling too so maybe they hit, hit even more who knows yeah there's a, a there's a, a series of breccia pipes and i think one that i've noticed is the porco central pipe which is in the south of this caldera formation uh i guess so i guess the, the, my question is to what extent are there are they focused on that uh santa barbara area that they're sort of uh, building a resource around i would think that was uh or, or you know to what extent are they really wanting to close that off and 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 come up well, with a number or to what extent are they stepping out i mean it's so it's almost yeah. endless i mean we could we could die of old age before this thing uh, goes that's a good question look i i would say you know the ultimate goal of any project like this or work exploration work like this is to to define a resource that can go into a mine that can become a mine so I think once um, Bill and Oswaldo and team have a sense that they have something that can, you know, uh, underpin a very large scale mine, say, you know, similar to San Cristobal or the other big mines in Bolivia, I think they'll they'll probably uh, round it off at that point and move, take it to a resource, but then move it towards economic study. Um, I don't see any like at this point they've de-risked this thing so much. Uh, I don't see any other significant issues popping up like they've done some metallurgical work here recently. I talked about I think I think I may, maybe talked about it on the show. I can't remember. You did. Uh, yes, you did on 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 the 10th. Yes, on uh, the last time you were on. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. Okay, but that that met work, you know, clearly shows uh this thing will generate exceptionally, you know, clean and high quality concentrates. So they they basically are on a good a good track right now. The fact they don't have a resource right yet is not a bother to me because I don't want to see no. him announce it with holes like this coming out. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I think look, they're smart guys. They will put this together into a presentable picture uh, within the next six to 12 months that just blows the, the lights out. You know, it absolutely shoots the lights out for in terms of the scale, the size of it, but also the economics. Yeah. I, you, I, yeah. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, Finish your thought. I, I was just going to say that uh, you know I, I've I got some familiarity with the deposits in Bolivia, and I know what makes a lot of money. Uh, this should make a lot of money. Okay, this is very simple rock. You put it in a mill, you grind it down, you float a, a lead, you float a zinc con, and you, you sell the product. This the silver typically goes into the lead con, at least primarily. Some of it goes into the zinc con. That's where you recover the silver. Now the other gravy here, of course, is the tin. There's a tin component, and that could be – it sounds like it can be floated as well. All right, so you're going to have very saleable concentrates out of this, and the cost should be very, very low because you're going to be milling this at a rate of, say, probably an order of fifty to 70,000 tons per day. Wow, okay. And uh, could you give us some sense of 
I know that the deposit varies in terms of its metal metal makeup uh, from place to place, but could you give us a sense of what sort of percentage of the valuation current current prices uh, is comprised of silver com- compared to tin and maybe the base metals? Yeah, silver uh, in in this look. If you just break down like this drill hole, you can see yeah. right away. Silver is about 45 grams out of the 188, so what is that? That's a, a little less than a quarter, about a quarter, a little mm-hmm. less than a little, little more, uh, yeah. The zinc is going to be a, a big part of that because zinc's 1.05% in this drill hole, so I would say zinc's going to be a, a bit over 50% of the value. Lead's going to be significant. Uh, at 0.76 percent, but tin, uh, even though tin's 1.14 percent in this drill hole, uh, tin's worth a lot of money these days. You know, it's trading for around 20, I think 24, 25 thousand dollars a ton. Mm. So the tin alone is going to add a lot of value here. So I would say first zinc, probably second will be either tin or silver, and then third would probably be uh, you know whatever doesn't fall in that spot, tin or silver, and then fourth will be uh, lead. But there is a there isn't is even a sniff of gold and and uh, you know like I said there's a sniff of copper in, in places here too so okay all right well it certainly looks good uh, just just real uh, well no my engineer is telling me I have two minutes yet so let me ask you what do you think um, if could you give us sort of a a rough very rough because we realize uh, you know we well there's been a lot of drilling so I'm I'm guessing that you might be able to give us some sort of sense of tonnage. Based on the on the parameters drilled out so far, and just roughly what kind of a uh, silver equivalent grade, uh, you know, give us a sort of a pessimistic I, view of it. I'll break it down in a couple of ways. Okay, so um, you know, if you look at the entire body of you know area that's been drilled out so far, you know, you come up with with very large tonnages. Now, all, not all of that is mineralized. Okay, some yeah. of the- Holes have you know twenty or thirty percent are, are mineralized, and other drill holes you know sixty, seventy, eighty percent are mineralized. But I would say if if you right now if you look at the the volume that's been drilled, I would say on the order of you know upper uh, just under a billion tons to maybe a bit over a billion tons in that range. And I would say that that bulk grade would probably be in the 100, 120 grams somewhere in there, silver equivalent. Mm-hmm. But if you you carve out the Santa Barbara area in particular, which is really shaping up to be a higher grade part to this, I would say you're probably looking at maybe three, four, five hundred thousand tons, and it's going to have a, a higher silver equivalent grade, probably on the order of a uh, hundred and thirty to one hundred and sixty grams per ton mm-hmm. silver, somewhere in there. That's my bet. And and you know what's going to make the best mine? Well, that Santa Barbara area, like <laughs> that is uh, is an amazing deposit in its own right. So. Um, I, I guess what I would say, Jay, is that if you look at the future of this, they'll probably mine. My guess is they'll mine Santa Barbara area, much like they mine, say, San Cristobal, which is nearby. And and then, you know, 50 or 100 years from now, when most of us are, are gone, <laughs> they'll be mining the rest of it, you know. <laughs> so it's a, it's a giant. And, of course, giant projects require giant CapEx. And at this point in time with the world, you know, who knows where things are going globally in the uh, the economy uh, that's always an issue of course uh but certainly the majors uh must have their eyes on this thing i would think the big boys must at least their geologists must be well aware of of, uh, of, the, of this of the of this evolving major world-class deposit yeah there there are certain companies certain major mining companies that are that have an appetite to, to operate in bolivia you know, you can see some who are operating there now, uh, but there's others that are starting to, to kind of test the waters too. That are sticking their toe in. So uh, yes, I think the 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 general picture. It's interesting. Bolivia is actually moving in the right direction, in my view, uh, mm-hmm. around mining, mining investment and attracting that money. And other countries, you know, we can pick up where you like Chile, for example, are moving in the wrong direction. So Bolivia, I think, is going to be the beneficiary of. Of the next wave of uh, of resource, you know, the commodity boom that we expect to come here soon. All right, very good. Well, I guess uh, we just keep our eyes on the drill results. They're always amazing. It seems uh, uh, when you start looking at them in terms of grams per meter, and put it in terms of gold. And I just, uh, you know, I look at that chart that you provided at Crescat gets active in terms of, you know, the top ten percent, the top one percent. Uh, and a lot of these drill holes, if you equate them into gold, would fall into those top levels, I think. So very exciting, uh, Quentin. I guess just, just watch for news coming out. There'll be a steady flow of it, I guess. 
That's right. I think they'll have plenty more good news. And lots of money. They're in good shape. I think they don't have to raise any money. They only have, I think I mentioned, a little under 70 million shares, which is also very good. That's correct. Yes, they're in good shape. Very tight tight shareholders. And we're a strong supporter. Thank you very much, Quentin, uh, for updating us on this 